Hey everyone, welcome to another podcast of Living a Full Life. I'm Dr. Enrico Dolcicori, and this week we are talking about our skin. This one's a fun topic. It's got amazing facts to it, and we take it for granted. Everyone really does. It just protects our body. It sits there. We all look at each other's skin, and and, and that's about it. But there's so much that we can tell from skin, from both a, a neurological, uh, physiological, and pathological way. I mean, our skin tells us whether we're allergic to something, whether we're having a reaction, whether we're um, processing properly, whether we're fatigued, whether we're healthy. Uh, it just shows us so much about our overall health. So by knowing some little things about our skin and your skin, you may be able to keep on top of your overall health as well. And we're going to go through some things about how to keep our skin healthy as well. And everything that it does. Of course, you know how my podcast goes. It's all about the science and physiology about everything. Um, so it's just really important to know how our skin works. I think we just take it for granted. I thought this would be just a fun podcast about our skin, but you're going to walk away with some great information here. Our skin is the largest organ in the body. It's an organ. People don't really think about it that way, but um, it covers about 22 square feet of the total surface area of our body. It's pretty large and uh, it just wraps around everything. Uh, layers of the skin. We have three layers of the skin that are really important to know. The outermost layer, the middle layer, and the deepest layer all do little things as far as uh, barrier from the outside world. So different skins do different things, different layers do the epidermis, the dermis, and the subcutaneous tissue. We talk about this all the time. The functions of the skin are what's really unique. It protects us. We know that it's a barrier from the outside world to the inside world. And uh, the external threats like bacteria, viruses, UV light, and some of the radiation that's out there uh, is what protects. It's the first barrier to that. Then it regulates. It helps regulate our body temperature through sweat and blood vessel dilation and constriction. And it has sensation control as well. All the senses and nerve endings in our body end in our skin. So it's called our dermatones and our sense, sensory area of the skin that really adapts our neurology to the outside world. It's really cool. It can tell temperature differences and cold and heat and, and sensation and prickly and soft and textures. All that sensation comes from the nervous system's endings, nerve endings in our skin. Very cool. And of course, it excretes uh, waste products through the skin as well through sweat. Uh, the skin has tons of cell turnover as well. The skin undergoes continuous process of uh, cell turnover where old skin cells are shed and replaced by new ones all the time. This happens in about 30 to 120 day cycles. Uh, this process ends up slowing down as we age and um, starts to show in our skin as we age as well. But this is where you know, collagen and elastin plays a big role in our overall body and connective tissue. Collagen provides skin with structure while elastin allows it to stretch and bounce back. Both are essential for maintaining skin elasticity and firmness. So this is why we usually recommend in our office for people to try collagen and glucosamine as supplements. And they'll usually see results in their skin, their nails, their hair, because that's really what that tissue is all made out of primarily. The things that affect our skin are, you know, the, one, the number one thing is UV damage. We're exposed to the sun all the time. Uh, that's why we wear clothes and work inside and protect ourselves from the sun. <clears throat> but UV radiation is the primary cause of, you know, wrinkling, aging, and increases risk of, of skin cancer. <clears throat> One of the best things to do to stay, uh, to keep our skin healthy is hydration. Uh, we, you know, when we say drinking enough water uh, helps with all of the body, but it's especially transparent in our skin. Our skin will dry out. Uh, it can lead to dryness, flakiness, um, peeling. And just the hydration helps keep the skin as, as plump and as thick as possible as that primary barrier to the exterior world. So that's pretty cool too. And there's different skin types out there as well. Uh, we, there's people that lean towards dry skin, oily skin, a combination of sensitive skin. Uh, so understanding how your skin adapts is really important. Um, my line of the family, you know, we run with oily skin. So we typically have more oil. We produce a little bit more oil. These are little things to worry about, or not to worry about, but little things to be cautious about so that we know um, how our skin works and how do we fuel it properly. So whenever our skin gets a little dry, we know that, well, there's something definitely wrong. What's going on? Is it the temperature outside? Is it the weather change? Is it the food that I'm eating? Am I feeling okay or well? So by knowing these little things, we can always adapt with our skin hygiene. That's very cool. 
uh, free radicals are out there too. I mean, there's pollutions, VOCs, um, <clears throat> they come from all over the place. And antioxidants are the main way to neutralize these free radicals. And the best way to get antioxidants is through whole foods. It's, uh, it's the best, the berries, the fruits, that's where high concentration of antioxidants lie is through our vegetables and fruits. That's why it's important to have a wide variety when it comes to our diet and not just stick to simple carbohydrates and meats all the time is to have, you know, to have a good array of vegetables every day, to have a good array of fruits every day. And these are the things that keep our antioxidants moving uh, as well. So the skin's really, really cool, really important. Some people are more conscious about their skin than others. Um, typically in the <clears throat> cosmetic industry, women are definitely on top of their skin. Men don't think about it as much where our routines are not as vigorous or intriguing as what women do. But either way, both ends of the spectrum, there has to be some type of balance of skin maintenance that we do from keeping it clean uh, regularly, you know, but just by washing, doing, making sure we do that, removing makeups and uh, excess oils from the skin um, is, is a good thing, but also not stripping too much of the microbiome off too much. So when we, when we teach our children, you know, to do bath time and all that, we're not soaping and lathering their whole body all the time, every single day, we're letting the natural flora and the natural um, bacterial growth on their skin to, to do this, uh, to make sure that maintains. So we're not, you know, scrubbing their skin for kids. We're not doing much of that um, very often at all. If, if at all during the week, they'll hop in the bath every night, but it's only for a few moments to, you know, wash the, the, the armpits, the groin, the, the stinky parts, we call them the belly button behind the ears. But when it comes to um, the overall skin, we're not scrubbing this down. We're not trying to sterilize the skin because there's a, the oil and flora that are on top of our skin is that sur superior barrier to the outside world. It actually protects us and has good resolution to our overall health. We want to moisturize. Our skin is a living entity and it's exposed to the elements unlike anything else. Below the skin, we have our organs and muscles and tissues that are protected thanks to our skin that don't have the oxidative stress of UV light and all the things that our skin goes through. So our skin goes through way more uh, than any other organ in the body. It's always exposed to the exterior world. It dehydrates, it dries out, it scuffs against different, pro you know, uh, abrasive materials, maybe the, the side of a tree or stone or scratched from a paper cut, whatever it may be, it's exposed to a lot of things. So, um, moisturizing the skin and keeping, keeping it protected is really important as well. If we do spend time outside, you know, using an adequate SPF protection to the UV light is important as well. Make sure these products, all products that we use on the skin are as organic as possible because when we start putting synthetics and 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 chemicals on our skin we absorb a lot of that into the bloodstream and a lot of these chemicals damage our skin long term so it's really important to use organic minimally um, contested compounds on our skin if it's an spf protection you know silver and these and these organic topicals are probably your best bet to do this once we get into uh synthetic and chemical compounds. Then we compound that with exposure to the sun. We're creating other chemicals on the skin that can be absorbed as well and leading to other problems. So being very cautious of what we put on our skin, both from sunscreen, cosmetics, lotions, topicals, all these things are really important to know what we're putting on our bodies. Uh, balanced diet. Uh, I think everything in health and wellness comes back to a balanced diet. Consume it, things that are rich in vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants. Uh, nutrients like vitamin C, vitamin E, omega-3 fatty acids from fish and oil and olives and uh, avocado and coconut, all that great stuff. Those good fatty acids are what helps keep our skin healthy as well. Stay hydrated, avoid smoking because it just severely dehydrates tissue ex excessive uh, to the skin as well. I don't know if you uh, know anyone that's a chronic smoker or chain smoker or long-term smoker, their skin looks vastly different than your skin. And that's because of the effects of damaging from the dehydration of the skin over time. Alcohol can also dehydrate skin. So limiting the alcohol consumption overall is, is a great idea there too. Stress shows up in our skin, both mental and physical stress. So chronic stress can neg negatively impact our skin. So practice, you know, stress management techniques, meditation, deep breathing on a regular basis, because this stuff is what shows through our skin and our, and that organ gets stressed as well. 
regular exercise is one of the best things you can do for your skin health, um, preserving it and uh, keeping it healthy. And remember, you know, you're probably thinking now so far into this podcast, like, okay, we're talking about skin this whole time. What, what, why is this so important? Well, your skin, the healthier your skin is, the less chance you have of any of the skin pathologies that are out there, melanoma, skin cancers, benign growth, cysts, all the things that can happen to our skin. So by keeping ourselves overall healthy and protecting our skin will help prevent a lot of these pathologies that happen in our skin. So get enough sleep too. Same types of things we talk about. You can substitute skin for heart, for liver, for brain, whatever you want to talk about, whatever organ you want to talk about. They all basically need the same thing, proper nutrition, proper rest for regeneration, protection, and proper diet and exercise. I mean, it all kind of circulates around the same things over and over again. This podcast was kind of spurred through... um, as a chiropractor, we're checking people all the time. We're, we're doing physical diagnosis all the time. And we were just getting to talk about all the skin conditions that are happening and what dermatologists have been doing a lot of the time. People come in and say, hey, be careful. Don't adjust this part of my back because I just had something removed or my skin removed. And I, I joke around. I'm like, these aren't dermatologists are just gouging people left, right, and center. But the truth is you really don't know unless you biopsy something to, to make sure we catch pathology. And that's what medicine's waiting for is the pathology to kick in. Then we now need medical services, right? Because now we have some type of pathology. My goal through vitalism is to prevent pathology from happening. And that's through maintaining health and wellness. And that's why we talk about a little bit about everything Am I a dermatologist? No. Should I be doing this podcast? Why not? Should I maybe get a guest dermatologist on here to go a little bit deeper? Absolutely. Maybe in the future. But for right now, the simple rules that come to healthy skin apply to everything else that we do in a healthy life as well. So when it comes to your skin, another cool fact is that it absorbs 25% of everything that gets put on it. It's a rough number. Uh, It doesn't absorb everything. If you put super glue on your skin, it's not going to absorb 25% of the super glue. (laughs) But the point of this is that the the skin will absorb. So we get into the little things that really, really matter. Our water filtration system on our home makes a huge difference as an extra barrier to remove chemicals and pesticides and herbicides and, and even uh, chemicals and um, prescription drugs out of our water supply. So that way when we go and sit in the bath or we have a shower, all the water that is falling onto our skin that we don't pick up 15, 20, 25% and absorb this into our bodies. That's a lot of chemical exposure that we don't need over time. Think about how many times you shower or have a bath. I mean, if you're like me, four or five times a week, everyone else daily, other people once a week, whatever. I, I don't know what it is, but it's almost daily for everyone. We hop in a shower or a bath. And you got to think about that over the time of your life, 365 days a year times 40 years times 60 years. This stuff starts to add up. So making sure that we have clean water coming into our home is really, really important. Of course, we know this for drinking, but even when it comes to skin exposure sitting there, so those of you with back uh, backyard pools, making sure you have salt water systems that are healthy and not creating chemicals and creating you know um, chlorine, over excessive chlorine in the water, acidity, these things are really important too. Just like how you check your pool, to make sure it's chemistry is right all the time. I do. I've got three kids. We, you know, I'm paranoid about this. I make sure that that pool is always, uh, I'm doing the dipstick test three times a week just to make sure that the water is always safe for them. Even if they don't jump in it for two weeks, I was always making sure the filters are always clean. So you got to think that same way for your water filtration system in your home too. You're going to be exposed to this water. So that's my biggest, um, talk in my practice to a lot of my patients, make sure you filter this water. Softeners and all these are preference. If you like to soften your water for, for certain reasons, for mechanical issues in the, in the in the building, or because you prefer soft water, or you don't like cleaning the spots on your glass or whatever it may be, those, that, those, that's completely different. Water softening is complete. If you're adding salt to the water, you're doing different things to soften the water from the hard municipality water that you're getting there. And the more you filter water, the harder it becomes because it just doesn't, you're pulling all the salts out, the minerals out, you're pulling everything out. And that's what makes hard water. Soft water is just mineralized water. That's what it is. It's got the minerals in it. It makes it soft. It actually feels a little bit more slick on your skin. That's uh, that's a personal preference when it comes to, to, to um, water filtration. So that's my PSA 
on skin. That's a cool episode. But yeah, maybe we should get a, a dermatologist on here. That'd be pretty fun. We know some good ones here, especially in Florida. They're on every corner. Make sure, you know, over the age of 30, you should be going into the dermatologist probably almost annually, to be honest with you. Over the age of 40, for sure. Any spots on the skin that look uh, odd should always be checked. As one great tip when it comes to skin health is just knowing your moles. Sounds funny. Knowing the moles. When you look in the mirror, you see yourself more than anyone else in that mirror. Um, you, you can see the moles that are growing. And then once they start to grow um, or get larger, it's time to go get those things checked to make sure that they're properly just mole and pigmentation issues and not benign or, or malignant type of issues that are happening there as well. So getting your skin checked over the age of 40, making it an annual thing, probably a good idea. Catching these things early, it's a simple biopsy if it becomes radical and they, they can check it. And uh, the good news is that 99% of all biopsies come back as benign, so which is awesome. But in case that we have that 1%, you're on it, you can have it treated and uh, eliminated quite easily these days. Just like any pathology, the longer we let it go, that's where it becomes tragic. That's where it becomes stressful. It's the longer it has time to manifest and grow. But the best way to prevent pathology is to stay vital and do the health and wellness things as much as you possibly can and just stick to a healthy routine. Sleep, food, stress. It's all about that that balance and cycle of all that. I know it's easier said than done, but there you go. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Have a great week. Stay well, stay healthy, and we'll catch you next week.